What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today we have a chatty little repot. Um, I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some stuff to talk about and I'm going to do that while I repot plants. So if you're into that kind of video, then you're going to want to go grab a snack because I'm a Gemini and I talk a lot. So the first thing on the agenda for the day um, is to put a few plants, two plants specifically, into semi-hydroponics. Um, now I would be putting uh, three plants in semi-hydroponics, but um, somebody forgot to order more Lekka pots. So, so the first on the docket here is the um, Philodendron Varicosum number five. This is allegedly the El Chaco Red. So um, I am putting this one uh, first because uh, distressingly, it has been putting out a new leaf that does not look very well, um, but I've not had one of these before. So uh, if this is supposed to look this pale green and yellow, uh, do let me know, but I suspect that that's not the case. And one of the downsides of doing what I do here on YouTube, um, I do things, you know, a lot of times I, I will film all of the plant chores that I do, and sometimes that results in me putting them off, which is no one's fault but my own. Okay, so you can see, I'm going to scoot this BB over here. You can see that she has put out quite a bit of water roots and just excellent growth here in the jar. I'm very new to semi-hydro. I'm going to go rinse these, give these roots a little rinse before we do this. I'm new to semi-hydro, so... Um, you know, if I'm doing something that's is killing you internally, please feel free to uh, politely let me know in the comments because um, I, I this is one of those things that I die. I'm just learning it now. So, but um, I'm gonna give these roots a little rinse with my uh, detachable bidet in the bathroom. Best thing that I bought during the pandemic, by the way. So I've rinsed her off a little bit, and I am gonna just trim. These are clean scissors. Um, I'm just gonna trim off. Just a couple of these longer, kind of grimier looking roots. Just because I'm afraid of rot happening inside of my container. Hi Duncan! Have you come to smack my lap out around? So, just putting a little in the bottom there. And I'm gonna set it in here. So this guy, I'm gonna like tip it a little so it stands up straighter see how that goes. Let's see, we'll start off with Jacqueline's Jungle. Um, she asked, how do you deal with trolls on the internet who just want to be negative? Not well. I am really good at telling other people to just ignore stupid people and not let them bother them, but I'm not always great at taking that advice myself. I actually don't really have too much trouble dealing with people saying shitty things to or about me. I guess because, I don't know, like, I know whether or not what they're saying is true, you know? So, um, <laughs> like, I feel like that doesn't really bother me. But um, what I do, this is what I do to myself, is I go and I look through comments, be it on other YouTubers' videos or you know, uh, Instagram posts, Twitter, just anywhere that you would generally see a lot of toxic, awful things that you should just not really take into your brains. And um, I will go and look at it. <laughs> and it's like the most unhealthy thing that I do to myself. And I have such a hard time stopping and I don't know why. Um, it's usually just like, I just need to I don't know, I, I, this is a mix with some fertilizer in it, and um, you use chemical fertilizer with semi-hydroponics. I made this the other day, I think you're supposed to like use it right away, but give me a break. Sometimes, you know, you might have said something that, you know, maybe somebody just misinterpreted, but a lot of times people are just being dicks. So um, yeah, I just delete it and move on because I've said this before, like, you're not, Duncan, I've said this before, you're, you're basically not going to um, come into my living room, essentially, and take a shit on the rug. 
that's just how I feel about it. Like, you can go and say shitty things about me on your stupid Facebook group instead. Okay, needed to prop that up on something before it fell down. I'm gonna have to figure out, I probably just need like a heavier pot and a little bit deeper, I think is what we're gonna, we're gonna work on. But for now, I just wanted to get it in something with nutrients in it. Duncan. So, you know, if it's something that's about me and it's not true, then, you know. Uh, I don't have time to try to convince people that are like, you know, they just want to lash out and hurt people. Like, what am I going to waste my time trying to convince them of anything for? So, I just keep moving. Um, my problem comes in, unfortunately, and fortunate, makes me a good friend, but uh, makes me miserable as well, um, is that I have a tendency to uh, get angry on other people's behalfs um, really often. And um, that doesn't really help anybody, Duncan. But a lot of times I will see, you know, just someone being a horrible person on the internet to some other person, and I just gotta step in. And then my damn notifications will be going off for weeks, months. On YouTube, people will just keep responding to you even years later. <laughs> so I'm just constantly reminded of uh, how many times I lost my chill and uh, put someone in their place on the internet. And it also really, I get very invested in people talking shit to my friends on YouTube. And especially when they're just so fucking wildly wrong about who that person is. Um, it's, it's really hard for me not to get upset about it. Um, so a lot of times I will pop off on people a little bit. Um, I think I've gotten to the point where I'm not you know, super hateful or rude about it, but um, sometimes I am. And sometimes I'm sorry, but a lot of times I'm not. <laughs> so here we go. This is my, uh, the philodendron rugosum that came from my Equigenera order. And this is taking to being in a pot a lot better than the other one, so that's nice. This is um, a little bit smaller than ideal, but this had a really small little root system and mostly just grew water in the roots. Um, sorry. It, it, they mostly just grew roots in the, the cup of water that I've had them in. So like, you know, this, this container actually fits the small amount of roots, but this is also putting out another leaf. Hopefully you can see that. So I did, you know, I'm losing this one, but we've got another much bigger one coming in and I wanted to make sure that like the other one, this had enough nutrients to be able to grow. So, oh, this looks so cute. Okay, I'm gonna get it out of the room with the thrips now though. Okay, so I just have one more plant from that Equigenera order to put in Lex. I'll just have to get a pot for it. What are you doing? You are not the main character on this channel. Oh, who am I kidding? You are the main character on this channel. All right, so next up, I am going to finally put some, again, quarantine purchases um, to use. So Wally Grow, um, and this is not sponsored. They don't know I'm doing this. I um, just found my stevia seeds. I have purchased quite a few Wally Grow planters over quarantine as they've got on sale and they've come out with new colors. And I got a couple for Mother's Day for um, both my mother and Mike's mother. So of course I got myself some too. Um, <laughs> oh, I forgot about this. Where'd this come from? I bought this a while back too and I still need to put a plant in that. Um, really, we're still in uh, recovery mode from garden neglect on all the houseplants. So I've uh, accumulated an awful lot of really cool pots that I haven't gotten a chance to use yet. So um, I ordered a few of these Wally Eco Living Wall Planters. So I plan to put some up there, sir. And um, what I wanted to do is at least get one going for this wall up here. And because I've lost so many, you know, of my more common plants as I've gone through this whole uh, thrip adventure, we'll call it, because I was just throwing them out, you know, like if they were infested and I knew I could easily replace them, I was just chalking that up as an excuse to go plant shopping. You know, like I, I um, at a certain point, you just gotta, you just gotta give up the, give up the battle a little bit. I did that with a few trailing plants and pothos and stuff. So what I wanted to do is start replacing those and 
I went to my favorite local nursery, which I'm gonna cut some clips in here if my editing software cooperates that I took with my phone. Um, and I love this place. They always have a really good selection and a lot of times um, they'll have plants either that I already have or that I'm just not really, I don't really have the environment for. Like, in, they had a ton of um, alocasias and stuff like that this time around and I was like, <sighs> like I just, I, I, I don't, I can't deal with those right now. Sir. I really do like my Wally Grow pots. As far as plastic pots go, um, I've had a lot of time with them because I feel like they don't breathe very well and they stay moist for too long. And I do like these pots because they have these like air holes. So far, everything that I've put in my Wally Grow planters has done pretty well. So um, I, well, with the exception of the plant that got thrips, but I don't blame that on Wally Grow. <laughs> um, and I also got, these are gonna go in the, these are gonna go in my soon to be filming room. My daughter is uh, flying the nest, moving in with her friend, and um, she'll be taking Lucifer the bunny with her as that is technically her rabbit. And um, she will be leaving me with an entire room that I will then be able to build into a studio, finally. <sighs> so I picked up this little Jade Pothos, which is just the nice, beautiful green pothos. So that's what's gonna go in here. And I have my uh, De La Tanks houseplant soil. I'm going to use, uh, cause this is nice and chunky and will drain well too. So do you feel like your ADHD affects your relationships with your plants? Yes. Ooh. I don't recommend opening the bag the way that I did. This is all uh, dry too, so uh, don't do this. You should repot things damp. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna get rid of some of this soil because I don't know where it came from. <coughs> well, I know where it came from, but I don't know what's in it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep some of the soil on there just because this is like a bazillion just little cuttings that are rooted, so. Which isn't, you know, super abnormal for this kind of stuff. What are you doing? Stop it. <sighs> this cat. Duncan, Duncan, buddy, love you. Love of my life. ADHD in plants, yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it affects my relationship with plants because obviously I forget to water. Um, I forget a lot of things like when I fertilized, um, I forget which, you know, it's, it's, Obviously all like the expected cliche things about ADHD definitely can affect your uh, relationship with plants just on the memory basis or whatever. Um, it also causes, you know, uh, ADHD can make you really prone to impulsive shopping and um, impulsive decisions and purchasing things maybe before you have researched them and stuff like that. So I do have to keep that kind of stuff in mind when I'm shopping and everything and uh, just make sure that I'm making smart purchases and everything. At the same time, ADHD also comes along with being really focused on your hobbies and really interested in learning things and just like ravenously, you know, educating yourself about stuff that you're interested in. A lot of people think that ADHD just you know, it, it, like it makes you dumb or like you don't remember anything or you can't focus at all. And the thing is, is you can focus. You just don't get to decide what on. Uh, when I first get into things, a lot of times, you know, especially if it's really consuming my attention, my friends will kind of be like, oh, here's her new thing, you know? And it's because I've had, I've had so many hobbies. I still do. Some of you know that I knit, you know, um, I was really into that pretty obsessively for a long time and I still do it. I just don't do it as often as I used to. Um, gardening has always been, well, I mean, for most of my adult life has been a fixation of mine. I was really into um, collecting books about homesteading and being self-sufficient and things like that, you know, years ago. 
my my hobbies don't always stick around, but a lot of times they do, you know. Um, and I've learned a lot of. I have a lot of hobbies. Like have a lot of stupid parlor tricks. Some of you know I can hula hoop, I belly dance, like I've gotten into a lot of things over my life. So my ADHD has enabled me to have that kind of hyper focus on learning how to take care of plants. And I've probably learned, you know, especially with the help of YouTube and stuff like that, uh, I've learned, you know, probably five years of plant information every year that I've been into this because I just it's all I think about when you have that kind of focus on something you can really absorb a lot of information and I, that's been a big blessing with me getting into anything because I don't have a lot of patience so if I can't catch on to something really quickly or at least somewhat quickly um, a lot of times I do lose interest in it so usually it's the hobbies that stick that are the ones that I kind of naturally have taken to and and really um, you know they stick in my brain so it's it's really enjoyable for me to learn about them rather than frustrating because i constantly forget things but you guys will see i forget plant names all the time and i'm sure that you know there's some asshole out there just like wow she doesn't know what she's talking about and it's like you know i knew it but it's gone now and i have to get a little refresher and that's why i have all of my plants well at least i, I did before i got disorganized so I try to keep all my plants tagged very clearly with the common name, with the scientific name, with where I got them, with when I got them, <clears throat> with when I got them as well. And I do that because, you know, it, it helps with the memory gaps. And at the same time, like, um, you know, as plant prices have gone up, like, that hasn't really stressed me out because... Uh, and I, a lot of people give me shit about this and think it's just because I'm friends with Haley or whatever, but um, I don't get mad about it because it's like, I don't know, I don't care what plants they are. Like, I don't know how to, like, make that not sound, like, I don't know, just, just like, condescending or whatever, but I... I can't help but sometimes like laugh at people that are just like so, I mean like their entire life depends on getting like a fucking strawberry pop tart double dutch fuck face philodendron you know and I I don't understand because I'm I with all the plants in the world like why wouldn't you just get one just get a different one that's that's cool for other reasons like I don't know I just there's just so much out there and I'm just so overwhelmed by it all that like I don't really understand um, why people aren't just like, oh, that's cool. I'll just wait for that to come down in price because it will. I don't know how I got off on that tangent. But some things that I do to kind of help with the ADD and forgetting stuff. Um, I am a meticulous garden journaler. I'm much better with it outdoors than I am indoors. But I do keep, um, you know, information about when I fertilize. I'll try to, like, put a little W on days that I water, like, everything in the house or something, just so I have an idea of when the last, like, big water that I did was. Um, and just writing stuff down. I just, there's no point in trying to keep it up here. It ain't gonna stick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that was introvert in a garden. In a garden. Gartner. Introvert in Gartner. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so Kay Lay, who has been uh, with, with this channel for quite some time, right girl? Uh, I recognize your face. So I'd love to hear about you and dance if you're open to telling that part of your story. Sure. Um, and Holly Puckett also said, I've heard tales of your storytelling prowess, perhaps a story. So maybe we'll combine those. And I've got some hand-thrown pottery here from my friend whose information I will stick right here. Um, I did do an unboxing of this, so you guys, you probably saw that, so I'll just, I'll just shut up. But her info will be here. Um, okay, so I'm going to put my Hoya Obscura in here, and uh, this was also sent to me by a lovely friend. Okay, so this used to be a lot more um, sun-stressed and it was doing a lot better under my hidden harvest um mole lights hopefully i don't get smacked for speaking their name youtube's got some issue with hidden harvest i don't know what it is um but i had those panels up here um in my white ikea shelf and i gotta say that this plant much preferred that light i'm probably going to install one of those lights back onto this shelf maybe on the lower end and put the put the plants under there that really liked that 
that bright light. But this this one has just, unfortunately, it was doing so well. And then uh, once again, the thrips came along. And I haven't really seen any on this plant, but it just, it looks like it's, it looks like perhaps it's been dined on a little bit. So I'm gonna give it a little repot and uh, hopefully that will, will help it out. All right, so dance and storytelling. Um, all right, so belly dancing. Um, I used to work at a little witchy shop. It was like a metaphysical store, a yoga center. We did, you know, there were psychic readings, all that stuff. Uh, basically your dream job as a teenage goth. So I was pretty ecstatic to be there. Um, it was a hard job though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was a very stressful job. The boss was uh, very awesome, but also very high strung. <laughs> so it was, it was a little hard keeping him happy. But anyway, my manager was super cool. We're still, we're still buddies. So, um, I was working at this store. They offered belly dancing classes there. And I had seen, I think it was via some, um, like Gaia catalog, you know, some like new agey catalog that I got when I was a kid, uh, had these, uh, I think their names were like Nina and Mina. Oh, I can't remember. I'll have to look them up and um you know add something on the screen but they were these belly dancing twins and they did these little workout videos and i just thought that was a really cool way to work out i was already into yoga so i was already into kind of at the time unconventional you know exercise this was uh 21 22 years ago something like that and i was working at the store that had the classes so i was like okay i am gonna try and take an in-person class because i had a good time trying to keep up with the Mina and Nina uh, <laughs> exercise videos that I watched. So I wanted to take an in-person class and it ended up being just incredibly fun. I was in a class with um, a lot of older women. Um, you know, I was like I said, I was like 19 at the time. There were women of just all shapes and sizes, all walks of life, all nationalities. Like it was just such a, a really cool experience for me because I grew up in such a homogenous, you know, town. I had some experience with like Chinese culture, but really that was it. I mean, and I, most of my friends growing up were white. So once that was kind of my first uh, entrance into adult life when I got out of high school, out of this like predetermined uh, peer group that I was in and started hanging out with older people than me, uh, people from other ethnicities and backgrounds and stuff. So I always connected belly dance with that because it really attracted just such an eclectic group of people and always women. And um, it was really nice to be in a space, no offense fellas, um, where you could do things that were considered, you know, I don't know, sexy, provocative, whatever but it wasn't for men. Like we weren't doing it for men. I know that historically, you know, there is that aspect to it, of course. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of aspects to it historically, and especially depending on what region you're talking about. But anyway, it's not important right now. Well, it's important, but whatever. This is why I don't do story times. What we were doing at the time was very empowering and uh, just a, a very safe space to have a lot of fun and feel beautiful and learn these moves that were very difficult. And my teacher was um, a traditional oriental style belly dance. So um, this like Egyptian style, pro probably what you would like, you know, think of if you thought of belly dance, although there's many different kinds of belly dances, Turkish belly dances, Lebanese belly dance. So, you know, there's all kinds of different um, iterations of it. Eventually I moved away. I moved down here where I am now when I got married uh, to my ex-husband, who is Aiden's dad. And um, I couldn't really find anything around here that was like that. Um, that class was very affordable. It was only like $11 or something. And um, I really liked my teacher and I just, for a long time, couldn't really find anything else like that. Um, but I always wanted to get back into it. So probably about 10 years ago now, so it had been about 10 years. Um, I was working at Staples, which was a horrible job, at least for me, I hated my boss. Um, so, and I met this uh, very 
eccentric customer who was uh, very particular about her very bizarre uh, print needs. So she was kind of a legend in the store in that sense, you know, so she'd be coming in and people would be like, oh, geez, here she comes, you know. Um, but I instantly was like, okay, well, I like weird people, you know. So we, we got to chatting and I found out she taught a belly dance class and I was like, you got to be kidding me. So, of course, I go down there and I try it out and um, I'm in this small class with these other women um, and there were a few floaters who came and went, but there were like five of us that kind of came consistently and we got to be very close and the teacher was is a very i don't want to like say bad things about anybody um but we'll just say that despite our best efforts to get along like um i came to really feel like it was a toxic dynamic between her and her students um she was really rude and kind of mean and i know that that's like a thing in the dance world where your teachers can be very strict and very kind of meh. Um, so I let it go for a long time and I, um, I don't mind, you know, tough love. I don't mind that stuff. And I didn't complain and I kept my mouth shut for a long time. And then, uh, the complaining had to start coming out. And I, I noticed that when I would sort of stick up for myself, um, she wasn't having that. And she always put me in the back. She always made me feel really bad about myself. And like, I was a really bad dancer. And listen, I'm not the best dancer. I'm not. I, it's been, I've been doing it for a long time. And I would say that I am mediocre and I don't say that to put myself down I just say that because I don't put the hours in you know that that really skilled dancers put in I just I was there to have fun so but that said we were an amateur group you know there was no reason to um, always put the same people in the back you know what I mean and, and just make little comments about how two of them had taken dance before so they were easier to teach and she's just it got to be a very hurtful situation after a while and it was not doing good things for my mental health. So, um, anyway, so we end up going, I don't have another plant to repot. Cute, cute, cute. All right. So hopefully she likes her new pot a little better. So it's my birthday about two years into this, uh, toxic dynamic <laughs> with my old teacher. Um, me and the girls are having a hard time, all of us. Um, there were a few holdouts that it took a while for them to be like, okay, yeah, you're right. This is not the best environment so it's my birthday we go to do this little backyard uh belly dancer gathering show and it was um it just happened to be my birthday and the other dance group that we that were hosting the event um it was they got word that it was my birthday so they went out and got me a cake and i was like i don't even know these people like it was just really really sweet and i and i was i just really was totally in love with all of these girls that I just met for the, basically for the first time. I think we may have run into that group before at other places, but that was like really where I met them the first time. And I ended up um, a little while later kind of defecting from my original, uh, my original dance group because I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, there was, we were, we were on like the second year of using the same costume and I really hated the costume. It was really cheap looking. It was really uncomfortable. It was really scratchy and, um, she just wouldn't budge on this one thing. Like we just wanted a different costume. And, and even that was like, just how dare you suggest such a thing. So I ended up just leaving. I was like, I'm over this. I was going to do an individual video repotting these cactus just to appease all the people that are constantly rudely asking me about it, um, but fuck them. Doing something that felt a little scandalous at the time and I went to Holly's dance class instead. I ended up having such a good time and, and the amount of compliments that Holly gave us, you know, she's, she's not a, um, She's a dance teacher. She will correct you if you're doing something wrong and she's going to have you do drills and she doesn't care if things hurt, you know, you're going to do it. Um, but she loves creative expression and she lo she finds the individual things in her students that make them shine. And I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting emotional talking about this, but it was the first time that, you know, I felt like I was a good dancer. And she, I remember at the end of the class, I, I just like broke down crying like I'm doing now. And I ended up telling everybody like what the classes were like for me for the last year. And, um, you know, and they all, I just remember they all like hugged me and it was just like, 
I go, okay, like this is what I used to love about this, you know? Anyway, um, so I obviously kept going um, and I danced with Holly for a long time and we did shows and you know, I was still sometimes the worst dancer and sometimes I did things good and, but I never felt bad about it in her class. I never felt, you know, it was back to being fun again. And I really hate what we've done to ourselves in society where like, if you don't do something so good that like you're a professional at it or you can turn it into a job or you can get people to pay you for it, like you shouldn't do it. And I think that sucks because there's a lot of things that I like to do that I'm not amazing at. I like to sing, I'm not amazing at it. I like to dance, I'm not amazing at it. You know, houseplants, not amazing at them, but I wanted to start a YouTube channel about it anyway. Um, so that's kind of um, how belly dance has been a pretty constant thing in my life. But I know that I can always call them up and be like, hey, can I get in on the next show you guys are doing? And I can come and be a part of that. And I'll always, always be welcome in that group. And it's like to have, you know, 15, 20 women that are just always on your side um, and that you can always go and have these like beautiful classes with and learn about all these amazing cultural expression expressions through dance and yeah so so we've got some that are pretty big and some that are just tiny little spikes and i will probably just get rid of those sorry um but somebody did point out to me in my comments before that the mix of cactus i got there were only a few that were like really worth growing indoors because the other ones would just be little mounds of spikes um that wouldn't get very big and just wouldn't be very friendly to have around the house. So uh, I'm probably just gonna pull out the bigger ones and there's just, you know, like five or six in here that just look uh, dangerous and tiny. So I'm gonna leave them in here. So next question, now that we've already cried on the third question. So Holly also asked, if you're really gonna treat yourself, what is your coffee order and what's your standard order? So standard, I drink coffee flavored coffee. Give me a regular, regular what? Coffee. Uh, black. I don't like sugar in it. I don't want cream in it. You know, it's just black coffee. What flavor? Coffee flavored coffee. <laughs> I like strong coffee. Uh, my treat myself though is an oat milk latte. Yum. Um, and my mom and dad, precious angels that they are, um, for Christmas this past year, got me, um, I'm just using these, uh, these tweezers right here. Uh, really handy super super handy especially if you have um, like terrariums and stuff that you need to get into without your fingers and they're working out really good to just sort of scoop up chunks of rooted soil here and just like place it on top of this soil so my parents got me an espresso maker and coffee machine it's like a whole coffee station um, and I can't remember the name of the brand it's definitely the fanciest coffee machine I've ever had and since I got that really don't take out coffee. I don't like go out for coffee at all. Um, when I do, I'm usually disappointed that it's not as good as the coffee I make at home. So um, if you're really into like fancy coffees, I really think you can save a lot of money if you get something like that. Just saying. Not sponsored, just addicted to coffee. See, so I'm just lifting little uh, cacti sushis. I feel like I'm eating sushi right now. So I'm just lifting these guys in making a little ditch with my finger and placing it like so. And this is just the black gold um, cactus and succulent mix. Not a big fan of black gold soil, but their cactus and succulent mix, I must say, is not bad. It's not bad. Any major lessons learned this growing season? So I'm not sure if you mean indoors or outdoors. Um, so obviously indoors, I've learned a lot about thrips and um, the fact that you shouldn't really ignore anything that looks like it's crawling on your plants because you're sad and you don't want to deal with it because um, that will very quickly turn into a very big problem that will make you sad for a lot longer. But outdoors, in my outdoor garden, I have learned so much. I'm probably going to just do, well, I'm definitely going to do a end of season video I would say some of the bigger ones, um, the tomato hedge with the uh, two mounds of like really loose 
pearl mix soil um, on top of a brand new no dig garden with just a cardboard barrier. That's worked out so well that I think that that was probably one of my more successful garden experiments. So I think that um, I would definitely have called that a pretty good lesson that um, mounding up soil can really make use of a new uh, no dig bed a lot faster. I mean, obviously a lot of people are trying to get it done quick and dirty and cheap. But if you have, you know, an extra 20 to $40 for a couple bales of ProMix and some compost maybe on top of the, you know, on top of that or mulch or something, you can really plant and stuff very easy. So as far as like outdoor gardening lessons, I'm definitely learning, um, not a big fan of peas, uh, so I don't need to grow so many of them. Um, they're fine. I just like, I feel like there's only so many things I can think of to do with them. And on that note, I'm also learning that um, while I was very into cooking for like 10 years, and I'm, I consider myself pretty good at it, um, I kind of hate it now. I need to make sure that when I'm planting next year, I'm considering the fact that when it comes to turning on an oven in the summertime, I shouldn't be growing so much food that I'm relying on having to cook it in a, a, a hot, kitchen um, in order to use it all because I did know that you know I would need to give some stuff away obviously um, but I really felt very confident that I would be able to you know bake a bunch of zucchini bread and like do things like that and it's like it's 90 fucking degrees out Pam you're not going to put your oven on and then I think it is uh, also difficult to be both the gardener and the cook because you know you grow all these things outside thinking of all the delicious things that you're going to make with them and then it's like you're fucking exhausted at the end of every day. So I'm just too tired to cook. I've eaten so many tomato sandwiches because you don't have to cook those. So I think that, um, and I don't know that I didn't come into this gardening season knowing this, but it's just, it's really been driven home that I need to also plan for how I'm gonna use this stuff as well as planning on how I'm gonna grow it because I feel like the how I'm gonna use it took a little bit of a backseat because it's not quite as fun for me. Um, so that kind of probably gets back to the whole ADD thing. And the other thing that I obviously learned is that um, I need to consider extreme weather a little bit more when I lay out and plan and stake my garden and stuff. Um, I did have some wind in mind, but for some reason I forget that we do occasionally get tropical storms here. <laughs> So this past weekend was very stressful. So Sweetscape Jungle asked, in case no one else thinks to ask, how are you? Like really, how are you doing? Uh, thank you for asking. Um, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, having, I'm having a bit of an existential crisis lately. I am having problems uh, like we discussed earlier, you know, just with my social media use kind of leaching into my mental health. Um, so we're working on that, and I think that will help a lot. I'm also extremely tired. It's the end of the gardening season. Um, you know, my son's about to start school again, and I'm already like, <sighs> I guess now it's just going to be another thing that I, I have to handle full-time, basically. I'm basically a full-time maid, cook, uh, YouTuber, mom and teacher and I'm tired already uh, and I'm also a cab most of the week now because my daughter has a new job and it's in the next city and I'm trying to help her out by getting her there and back so that she's got enough money to get her own car and it's just like you know stuff you want to do for your kids obviously to help them out and give them a boost but um I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired outside of that I'm having a little bit of trouble figuring out what I want to do on this channel what I want to do with the rest of my life I have come to the conclusion that I don't want to photograph weddings anymore and um, I knew it was coming and I've kind of threatened to and sort of quit once before but I had kind of lost the passion I'd lost that like I was talking about earlier that like desire to, to focus on it all the time that's like long gone and I feel like that was what really made my photos stand out and have like a little extra something so now when we're at the point where it's now become like a job that it's like you know after 10 11 years of a job that you absolutely cannot call out sick you um you can't fuck up like you really can't make a mistake and it's really stressful and i lost my partner that i that i worked with all the time not you know that's the whole thing and then you know so that really sucked a lot of it a lot of the joy out of it for me because we really had a great dynamic and i just don't, i don't want to shoot weddings anymore without him so um 
I just don't want to do it anymore. The last one that I did, and um, I don't even like, I like, uh, I hesitate to talk about it because I don't want the bride to like see this and feel bad or anything. But I, my last wedding, you know, right before I left, I went to feed Shiloh, my old rabbit, before she passed away, um, and I found her almost dead. And I had to leave her to go, fuck, I'm not crying again in this fucking q and I had to leave her to go to work. I didn't, it was, I had to leave. I was already like really cutting it close on time. And I just saw her that way. And she, you know, it, it had been coming a long time. She was old, she was sick, she was paralyzed from the waist down. If you guys have been on my Instagram, you know, the whole saga I went through with her. She, I had her in acupuncture. I was, I was doing everything I could. She was 11 years old. So I knew it was time, um, so I put her by the, by the heater here on her favorite pillow, and I told my boyfriend who would be home, you know, um, probably before me, uh, just to come and make sure that he went right to her when he got here, and um, I left. It was an elopement, I knew I wouldn't be gone for too long, so I just, I just had to go to work, and um, I came home that night, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I don't ever want another job that I can't, you know, have a family emergency, which is very much what I considered that, and um, and really not be able to call out without ruining somebody else's, like, most important day, you know? So, uh, fortunately, Shiloh didn't pass away until a little bit after I got home. Uh, no one will ever be able to convince me that she didn't wait for me to get there, and uh, she died in my arms a little bit after I got home. So, I'm not a wedding photographer anymore, and that is really fucking me off because that was kind of my backup so now I just have this and um I don't necessarily know what not you guys like you guys are very cool but like I said I'm a comment reader I kind of know what the community's thinking a lot of the time and I'm not so sure I know what the community wants anymore um, we, I see a lot of turning on people for, you know, having or showing plants that are hard to afford right now. I see a lot of people blaming plant influencers, what the fuck that means, um, for, for everything, basically, for the price hikes, for the trends, for everybody's, you know, purchasing habits and, um... I'm a little bit afraid to put anything out anymore, so I've been having a really fucking hard time with that, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, and I'm not trying to, like, uh, you know, solicit sympathy. I don't know. I'm just having a very difficult time, mostly due to the way some other people in this community are treated, uh, with kind of knowing what the fuck everybody wants from us, like, and, uh, I don't want to make videos coming from that bad energy, you know what I mean? So sometimes, um, you know, if people are getting real pushy about me putting a video out or something, um, I won't do it because I just like, I don't know, I just don't want to, I don't like being told what to do, <laughs> like, especially when it's, you know, doing something that is supposed to be fun and make me happy. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of been what's been rolling around in my noggin lately. Uh, so I, you may be sorry you asked at this point, but I don't know if you guys want to talk about that down below, like what, you know, has your plant tube viewing changed over the years like what do you what do you want to see from my channel from other channels like what do you not want to see in the plant community anymore like i'm i'm very curious to know what um my audience thinks because i feel like a lot of my again that like negative voice that's getting in my head that's like becoming this like uh, amalgamation of of youtube viewers um i kind of want to know what like my audience thinks and not necessarily that audience that I've made up in my head. Earth, Wind, and Fire or Cool in the Gang? And that's from Beth Groves Stuff. What a great question. Um, man. I'm gonna have to go with Cool in the Gang. What are your fall garden plans so far? Most exciting fall flowers. Well, I have started a bunch more zinnia. Hopefully I will have those by the end of fall if we have a longer fall, which I think we will. We have the last few years. Um, but overall, my flowers may be starting to kind of die off by the fall. I may have to like go to the nursery and grab some, I don't know, some like carnations, marigolds, stuff like that, just to have some stuff outside because I kind of dropped the ball on starting um, a second wave of flowers in the middle of the summer. But um, right now, 
Um, I'm going to start planting my fall greens. So I'm like lettuce, your brassicas, your kale, cabbage. I'm, I'm gonna try and grow some more beets, some more carrots. So I'm gonna plant a lot of that stuff over in the bed where I've been pulling out summer crops and just get those going so that I can have something, you know, I can cover them up if it gets like super frosty, but a lot of stuff like kale tastes better after a frost. I have some noodle beans that are growing, some cucamelons. Just touched these cactus with my fingers. And those should all be coming along this fall pretty well. Uh, my ground cherries are starting to come in, which is very exciting. So I'll have those for the fall as well. And then um, I'm going to be focusing on planting my cool flowers, which I'm gonna do a video about. I'll show you guys what I do, but basically cool flowers or their um, cold hardy annuals, I believe is the technical term for them. You can look up Lisa Mason Ziegler. She's kind of the uh, current guru on this stuff, but it's an old tradition basically where you will start your flowers for early next spring in the fall. So you'll get them in the ground, get them established while the weather is still warm and sunny. And then by the first frost, you have these little baby plants that can actually overwinter. And then come really early summer, they're just gonna shoot up and be beautiful blooms about four weeks before everybody else has flowers. You guys technically saw me do this um, the season before last. It's just that I planted those little baby plants really early in the spring when it was still like February. So I'm gonna do it the correct way this time. That time it worked, but it, the right way to do it really is to um, start them in the fall and then have those little baby plants over winter. So that's my next big project is getting that garden ready. And I'm gonna be putting some cardboard down to start a couple new beds for next season. Ooh, we might have to do some of these next time because I am running out of steam and there's a lot more questions. Uh, Cuties with Cardi asked if I have any veggies growing inside. I do have a pepper in a can. I will uh, cut in some footage of what Hurricane Jack did to that because he broke a freaking arm off it the other day. Still no peppers. I'm trying, but it's a whole ass plant in a can, which is pretty cool. Ents and Sensibility, a uh, great podcast if you're a fan of Jane Austen, Tolkien, kind of classic literature, uh, asked, hey Pam, garden question, which pesticides, if any, do you use on outdoor plants? And thus, thus far, none. I haven't used any. Um, I did try to use like uh, insecticidal soap on the older rose that's sort of in the bushes in the corner of my yard just to see if it would help with the aphids and it didn't. Um, what helps with the aphids is leaving them there for the ladybugs to find. So um, I just, or blasting them off with a hose, which actually worked really well for me this year. Just like consistently blasting my roses off with a hose um, kept the aphids from doing a ton of damage to my roses. Um, but yeah, I haven't used anything yet. I did buy some diatomaceous earth, um, just to have it. Uh, I, you know, just, I was having some issues with, um, what did I even buy that for? Point being is I didn't end up using it. So it's just sitting in the other room. I didn't use that. Um, and then I think the only other thing that I've purchased recently is some two inch copper tape, which I guess slugs have a hard time crawling across. I guess like the one inch, they'll kind of deal with being zapped and they'll crawl across it. But I heard the two inch will really do a good job. So if you put like, you know, a little square around the base of your plant or whatever, they shouldn't be able to crawl past it and up onto it. Got that for my peppers because these slugs just continually keep eating my sugar rush peach. Like, ugh. all time favorite song. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Everybody always asks me for favorite things and like my brain will explode. I have too many favorites. I, I, I couldn't even imagine narrowing it down to an all time favorite. I'm sorry. That's such a horrible answer. I hate saying that to people. I'm sorry. How did you learn about seed saving? YouTube. That's where I learn about everything. <laughs> always learn about everything on YouTube. Um, I also have an extensive gardening book library. It is getting a little bit out of hand, uh, but I do have quite a few that touch on seed saving as well. So I've read those obviously. Seed saving is, is wonderfully intuitive most of the time. Some, some plants, you know, they kind of hide their seeds and stuff, but I think that if you really like observe your plants, if you let them get to the point where they have died, you know, they've flowered, they've died off, they're starting to brown and dry at the head, you know, you can split them apart and you'll see the seeds, you know, you'll, you'll see what they look like and you can Google what seeds look like. And a lot of times the key to seed saving is just making sure that they don't have any moisture in them when you then later seal them up and put them away. And what I do sometimes if I'm not sure is I'll take one of my little seed baggies that I have, because I do use plastic baggies sometimes. 
especially for small seeds, I find they just fall out of the paper envelopes. I will put a seed in and I'll seal it up in that plastic bag and I'll leave it for about a week. And if I see any kind of moisture in that bag or mold or anything like that growing, then I know the seeds aren't ready to be put away yet. So that's just a little something that might help you out. And Happy Little Bush asks, what famous animal has the most boopable snoot? I say it's Thackeray Binks. That is a very, very good suggestion. And I would add to that Snuffleupagus. Incredibly boopable snoot. Okay guys, I think that I'm gonna stop because I've talked so long that um, my throat hurts and this video is going to be awful to edit. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we did finally get some things repot. Here is what the baby cactus look like in their new home. How stinking adorable are those? Absolutely so cute. And I'll show you um, some of the ones that I've left in here. Actually, I'm gonna lift a couple more because I see a couple more that look kind of cute, but they're just, they're just little things of spikes. And these are at this point like over a year and a half old, I think. So if they're still this small at a year and a half, I'm really happy that that's done. Of course, we've got the Jade Pothos and that looks beautiful. And I know that this will grow long and lush and beautiful and give me back some of those trailing vines that I have lost since the great thrip fucking of 2021. <laughs> So thank you for hanging out with me, guys. Thanks for listening to me ramble all this time and always being super cool to me. Um, it is a pretty great problem that I have to leave my own space to see shitty comments most of the time. So thank you guys.